Hello and welcome back to the news this week. Now first up is uh, a story about the asteroid Beano. Now we haven't previously covered Beano, but it's been on my watch list for, for some time. Now this is an asteroid that NASA uh, sent a probe to and the first images of the asteroid that they sent back were very different from what they had initially expected. Now as you can see in the image the asteroid isn't smooth or jagged like you'd kind of expect it to be. Uh, instead it seems to be covered with a sprinkling of much smaller rocks almost like pebbles on a beach uh, and these pebbles just seem to stay there quite happily. The problem is this asteroid is too small to be able to have a large enough gravitational attraction to keep these smaller rocks on the surface. Um, they should simply float away and yet for some reason they don't. Now recently, and, and this is really what they published this week, they, they've been looking at the, the spin of the asteroid and by measuring that spin they've actually um, realized that the, the spin of the asteroid is increasing so it's spinning faster and faster and we're not talking a large amount you know this is i think it, it spin increases by about one second over the span of i think they they quoted a century so it's not a, an awful lot but the problem is that they have no mechanism to explain how this could happen now Instead, if we were to view the asteroid as in an electric universe, potentially having a different electrostatic charge to its surroundings, then is it possible that the rocks on the surface are held there by that attractive force? Could the movement of this asteroid through the plasma sheath of our solar system somehow power it like a motor? And if it is connected or passing through a Birkeland current, could this cause these effects, a sudden rise or increase in, in that motor effect? Now, in the electric universe theory, there really is no difference between an asteroid and a comet. It's just the difference of potential and where it is relative to its surrounding potential. Now, these images are images of recent comet landings. And for me, they are very similar to uh, asteroid Bennu. Now they show the same sort of thing, so small amounts of uh, dust and rocks uh, on the surface. And again, the, the image of the comet looks nothing like the, the media portrays a comet, so it's not a, an ice ball like you expect to see. Now next up we move to the solar system. Now for some time we've known that both Earth and Venus have a ring of dust that orbits with us around the sun, very much like a, a disc and we are sat on the disc and the whole disc moves around the sun. Now for a long time it was thought that Mercury was too close to the sun for this fine dust to actually survive. And they kind of thought that the, the solar radiation would just blast this away. But a new study has actually identified that there is a vast trail of very fine cosmic dust within Mercury's orbit, forming a ring nearly 15 million kilometers wide. Now the reason I find this particularly interesting is to do with the process of the formation of bodies in the solar system. Now, if a Z-pinch formed the Sun through a galactic Birkeland current, and this in turn created a, a, a ring system around the object as it started to coalesce and that within that ring system separate bodies started to form within that. Now is this what happens to newly ejected quasars as they form into galaxies? Is matter moved outwards from the ring system? So you have a galactic z-pinch that forms the, the object and then you have secondary Birkeland currents that flow out along that uh, ring system uh, forming new Z pinches and potentially forming new objects. A bit like a fractal pattern, I suppose, repeating at smaller and smaller scales. Now, do we see this process when we look at both Jupiter and Saturn? They both have very clear and distinct ring systems. And we know that Saturn is still forming new moons. Now, does it have a more active Birkeland current driving this potentially? And now for the last article, we're going to have to delve down the rabbit hole to explore the world of quantum mechanics. Now a new quantum physics experiment has just provided evidence to an idea that was only ever that, an idea, 
a thought experiment. Now, the, the idea was that under the right conditions, two people could observe the same event, but see two different outcomes, and yet both would still be correct. Now, the actual experiment involves two people observing one single photon, and the photon can exist in one of two alignments, but until the moment someone actually measures it to determine which state it's in, the photon is said to exist in a superposition, i.e. both conditions are true at the same time. Now, in the experiment, a scientist quietly analyzes the photon to determine its alignment. Now, another scientist, unaware of the first measurement, is able to confirm that the photon still exists in a quantum superposition of all possible outcomes. And as a result, each scientist experiences a different reality. Both are technically true, even though they disagree with each other. So, so what does this outcome of this experiment mean for our reality? Well, science is based on observational data. But if two scientists can observe two different outcomes for the same event, it calls into the question the actual nature of reality and may point to the fact that we do not share the same objective reality. And it may be that we each create our own reality locally. And on that mind-bending thought, I will leave you for this week. Now, on Monday, a new episode will come out on... Uh, plasma, uh, double layers, and Markland convection. So look out for that one. But as always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.